Hello and welcome to the Daylighting in Ladybug Tools series. In this video, we will review modifiers or radiance materials that you can apply to your daylighting model. We're using the Creating Modifier Samples file that comes with your Ladybug Tools download and is also available in the Daylighting Gitbook for download purposes. Uh, and within all of the components that you see in the script here are available in the Honeybee Radiance tab under Modifiers. So this video is going to focus primarily on this um, series of components. Okay, so the first set of components are actually um, searching an existing library of materials that are available. So you can search for modifier sets and what a set is, is it basically contains uh, exterior, interior, wall types, and materials in, in, in a set. Um, or you can uh, search for modifiers on their own. So there's the modifiers, which are the actual material components, or modifier sets, which is a combination of interior and exterior modifiers. These components are found, uh, they're the first two components. So we have the search modifier sets and search modifiers. Just ignore that little typo there. Um, and if you connect the panel to the component, as the script shows, you can see all of the uh, components in the search file. You can sort by keyword. So if I did, if I created a panel and typed in interior, it will sort by keyword and only show the interior components. Same for the modifiers search component. If I wanted to find just ceiling and I connected that, it will search for just ceiling. So you can see how that can help you simplify what you're looking for. Um, or you can use a native grasshopper component, which is the list item component by just typing in list item and dropping that component down. Uh, typically, you need to connect an index that uh, spans the length of that list. So this list is from 0 to 3. So I can create a slider that goes from 0 to 3 for this list, or I can create a slider that goes from 0 to 18 for the modifier list. So we have four sets and 19 modifiers that come with the Honeybee Radiance package. And they're all generic uh, components, right? So later in this video, we'll talk about how to create your own custom modifier uh, based on a product or other data that you have. Uh, the default index is always zero, but if you toggle through it, you can see that some of the materiality will change as you um, select a different index. So zero corresponds with the first input in the list. And as you scroll over, like it'll be easier to see in the materials modifier here, where each line item has a different set of properties assigned to it. So the search modifier or modifier set library and deconstruct modifiers components uh, really don't change any of the default uh, materials that are applied. Uh, you're really only using this library search feature to understand the different materials that are used as the default values in a model. To override any of the materials, you want to shift to create modifiers. Uh, and so if we go to the modifier tab, and we can see that there are multiple different modifier components. So for metals, opaque materials, glass, mirrors, or translucent surfaces, you want to use one of these modifier components to create your own material that is custom from the default. So we do have each of the different modifier types available in the Grasshopper Canvas here, uh, starting with the opaque modifiers. Then we have an opaque modifier three. So each of the material types, there's five, right? There's metal, opaque, glass, mirror, translucent, has a reciprocal 
or mirrored component that allows you to define the color that you're using. So with just the opaque modifier, you can give all of the materiality but not the color reflectance. It's just a single value for um, red, green, and blue channels. But uh, the, the same opaque modifier with three added to it will allow you to actually pick a color for your RGB color channels. And you can use a color swatch with a grasshopper component to split ARGB um, to get the RGB values for a color in a swatch. Uh, the same can be done for glass. So we have the uh, HB glass modifier. If you just have a clear glass, you can use the HB glass modifier. Uh, but if you have a tinted glass or a glass with a color, you probably want to use the HB glass modifier 3 so that you can actually find the color uh, of the glass and input it here. You don't have to use the split ARGB component. You can also just uh, put values in a panel like this. If you know them from a spec sheet, for example, you can just type 0039, whatever the value is, and input that as the R transmittance instead. And what you see on the right hand side is actually the radiance definition. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you can go to the radiance library online and use that to find more information. Similar to the glass materials, we also have a translucent material. Um, so you can see here, there's an example of Calwall, which is a manufacturer that creates translucent materials. And these are just some properties for that material. Um, without color specified separately, right? So the reflectance and transmittance values are the same for uh, all color channels. Uh, but the modifier three for translucent materials contains the various colors that you can use. So in the sample script, it's showing you a division factor. And what it's doing is it's taking the color values and dividing them by two. Uh, this is not something you have to do. This is just an option that you can see that you can modify the color channels, uh, the, the values for the color channels using a division factor or a multiplication factor if you need to. Um, and then you just have to make sure all the other properties are completed for there. And again, the same applies for metal materials. You can create uh, just a single value for a polished like a material, a met metallic material or you can have a tinted colored um, mater uh, metallic material. Same thing for mirrors, right? We have two different materials. And then lastly, we have the BSDF modifier. So if you have a custom XML file for a bidirectional scattering distribution function or a BSDF radiance modifier, uh, you can connect a path. So this component is a file path to a location on your C drive to the input and upload a BSDF um, modifier for a custom material. Once you've created modifiers, you can use uh, a series of components to create modifier sets. So we can create a modifier set for exterior walls, roofs, floors, interior materials. You can have a subset for uh, subfaces, so any windows, skylights, uh, doors, uh, whether or not the windows are operable, uh, say, uh, overhead doors, and then for shading materials. So each of these components are also found in the modifier panel where you see uh, the subsets. So each subset is used to create a mo uh, modifier set. So this is how you can use, uh, you can connect your exterior wall, for example, to here, and you can connect your foliage to exterior shade, et cetera. You can create your own, use them, create modifiers, which connects to the modifier subset, which then connects to the modifier set. Once you've created all of your materials, you have to apply them to your, uh, objects or the geometry. And there's several components that you can use to do that. So you can apply modifier sets to honeybee rooms. Uh, so if you have a series of rooms that you've created, you would just apply the modifier set to that whole geometry. 
or you can um, apply to face. So if you're working in the face by face workflow, you can apply a modifier to honeybee faces. Um, then we also have apply window modifier. So this would be just to a glass window or a glass door. And it would apply it to child apertures of an input face or a room. And lastly, um, applying it to shade modifiers. So if you have shading objects, you can apply this modifier just to all of the shading aspects and keep everything else default or etc. So let's take a look at how to actually do that. So I have here a grid-based annual recipe that I'm going to pull up. And if I have a room-based geometry like this, we can add modifier sets here if we already know which ones we want to use. Or we can add them by applying them to the rooms. So we can take that last output and apply it there. Let's see what that actually looks like. So we can take the uh, apply modifier set to rooms and say we want to use a exterior modifier. So let's just take this. And got this and I'm going to apply it to the grid based. So I'll copy it here. So I'll connect the modifier set and connect it to a panel. So we see we have a generic exterior solar modifier set. Maybe we want to change that to generic exterior visible. And I'll hit enter. And if we go back to the modifier component, you can see apply modifier set. So we can take the rooms, which is the HB objects, and we can connect this modifier set and it will go to gray. That's how we know it's working. And you just connect it there. So that's how you can use the apply to rooms. If you're applying to surfaces, you can say apply window modifier, for example. And again, we'll take the HB objects and we will apply. Um, in this case, you might want to take a window modifier, right? So if we go to the modifiers and say we are using cal wall on our building, so we can copy this and go back to our recipe and say control V, find it, it's right here. And apply this to the modifier here. And then go ahead and connect HB objects to rooms. So this will only apply it to child surfaces, right? Because this component is set to apply modifiers to apertures or glass doors. Uh, and so it only applies to the child apertures of faces, etc. Okay. And one thing I forgot to mention is that you can uh, add a list of modifiers based on cardinal orientation. So you, if you have different materials for different orientations, east, west, north, south, you can connect it in that order. It starts with north to east, uh, south, and then west in that order. OK, so that's pretty simple. Um, if you're using the face by face workflow, you can also add, for example, the um, materials at the face level. So if you know your windows are going to be at cow wall, you can just add them straight to the modifier input in the HB aperture or the HB face component because there's a radiance modifier input at each face. So in this workflow, you have a lot of granularity where if you have a room with different wall paint colors, you can have multiple faces and apply each um, modifier for opaque faces as the different colors of the wall and really get into the details. Same for ceilings and floors. Say you have carpet with wood, with tile, you have a couple of different types of materials. You can break this out and make a couple of different types based on the material type. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover in the creating modifiers workflow video. But um, just remember this uh, script and these components are available for download and reference at any time. Thank you so much.